What's up, gangsters? So here we go with yet another episode of this <laughs> foil thing. And look, I'm just going to tell you right now, don't watch this video. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's terrible. Of all the videos I've ever made, the last 320 however many episodes, this one is my least favorite. I hate it because it's 52 minutes of fail. It, it's terrible. Um, it, so only watch this video if you are either A, really having a hard time falling asleep at night, B, just a masochist and you really want to torture yourself, or C, if you just really want to see these different methods of foiling and the materials that did not work. <laughs> Because that's all this 52 minutes is. It, it, there is no success. But, and, and honestly, um, I wouldn't want to watch it. I would skip directly to episode number nine, where I do finally find some success. So anyway, if you want to watch it, yeah, okay, it's all you. Uh, this address is like all of these things that people have been telling me that I need to do. Um, you know, the uh, talking to Jen Wright in particular, uh, you, you know, doing, again, the Osvaldo Vigiani technique with different glue, applying some, uh, some, some foil to a surface that I know is perfectly smooth. All that stuff, yeah, that happens in this video to no avail. <laughs> the magic happens in the following episode. So anyway, you've been warned. All right, so first things first. Um, what I've got here uh, is, again, this piece of Lexan. Uh, you can see it is very nice, very slick, uh, very shiny. Got some fingerprints and some dust on it. I'm going to clean that off. But it's got some foil on it, okay? And you can see that it has pretty bad texture on this piece and on this piece as well. And that this piece is bubbling up. Not sure what's going on there, but you can see uh, that the uh, the glue has not held. And I believe that this piece that's bubbling up, again, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure that that came off of my sheet of foil that I made. And I think that this will verify that because if you compare the finish, okay, compare the finish and the shape, I think you can see that this piece here came off of that space right there. And this is the foil that I made back in, in January, whenever it was, um, where I sprayed the adhesive on and got a pretty nice smooth layer. And then I put it on this uh, backing sheet. This is the non-stick backing sheet from some vinyl masking material. And it's been sitting around for the last seven months doing nothing. And so it'll be kind of interesting to see what happens when uh, I peel a piece of that off of there and uh, we see how it works. But real quick, I'm going to just clean uh, this off Put, squirt a little bit of 409 on there. Make sure that's nice and clean. And then I'll get some little pieces ready here and uh, we'll see what happens when we burnish those on. Okay, so here I am taking this piece off of my homemade sheet and we'll see if it's even gonna stick. Uh, we'll put that right here. We'll see what happens. Seems sticky. Do the Q-tip burnishing first. I mean, it looks pretty good. So we'll see what happens. I, I'm just curious, like, d you know, I didn't know if the adhesive would even still be uh, sticky or not. So this is kind of a cool result to see that you can make your own if nothing else, you can store it for a long time and it will not, you know, the adhesive won't, won't degrade. I mean, that's, that's gone on there pretty well. 
And, and again, you know, at, at first glance, it looks pretty good, but you can see... Hopefully I can get the camera angle right, because that's always the frustration here. You can see a little bit of the texture. Not bad. You can definitely see that dust speck that was underneath it. Let me see what happens when I get my balsa wood burnisher and see how how it looks. Because it's like the more you burnish, the more that texture, if it's gonna be there, will show up. Okay, and there it is, all right? From that angle, from that angle, no texture. You'd think that was a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. But then when you turn it more at more of an angle, you definitely start to be able to see what I'm talking about. There it is, right there. That's a good view of it. It's almost like the burnishing process itself does something to the glue that makes it get that basketball skin texture. So I don't know, but that's not good. All right, now let me get a piece of the uh, of the uh, actual branded bare metal foil off of here, and we'll try that again. Um, again, this is this is pretty new. This package of just plain chrome hasn't been opened. This package of of the ultra bright chrome is the one that I took the sample off of that you see here already. So. Um, okay, so that that's my old sheet that I was using. This is the new sheet. And it, you can see, I mean, no texture. I mean, that looks awesome, right? You'd think, man, I am in business with that. Because on, on the backing paper... There's really no offensive texture. You've got the grain. That's not too bad. There's a little bit of waviness there. You can kind of see a little bit of waviness under there. But it's not it's not real bad. Anyway, let's yank a piece of that off and see what happens. And here we go. This is me trying to get this piece of, of, of BMF off the backing sheet. And this is the one of the things that I really hate about this stuff. This stuff, I think, is, is uh, got higher hardness than your typical kitchen foil. And so it's just more brittle. And it is practically impossible to get this stuff off of the backing sheet without tearing it. It's super frustrating. And you can almost feel as you're working with it how crinkly it is. And, and that's part of what makes me think that it's got a higher, a higher hardness value than, uh, than, than, than regular kitchen foil. But look, before I even put it on there, you can see just from lifting it off, you can see the wrinkles. You can see the... You can see that that wrinkly texture. And I don't think that's gonna go away, but let's drop it on here and see what happens. I mean, I don't know of any other method for getting it off of the backing sheet. It's not like that's a technique, but let's see what happens here. Okay, so. All I've done there is rub that down with the Q-tip and there you go. Look, look at that. Looks like a freaking basketball. 
that's that's what I'm that's what's the that's a deal breaker for me. I mean, I get that maybe for you know not everybody's going to agree that that that's that that's you know that that's unacceptable, but the bottom line is that as bad as aluminum imposter and chrome imposter paints are, if you paint correctly, you don't get that texture. You at least get a nice smooth surface. And it doesn't matter what angle you look at it at. The problem is, though, that it does still look like alum like paint. And you can't get around that. There's just a quality that real aluminum has that paint is just never going to duplicate. But the problem is that that texture is just, for me, is a, is, is a deal breaker. Like, I'm, you know, I'm now a foot away from that, and I'm looking at it in a different light, and I can see that texture just as plain as day. It's just not acceptable. So, the next thing is, I think I think at this point I, I'm just uh, I'm just ruling out bare metal foil, the branded stuff. It, it's just I just don't see that that, that that's going to change or that that's going to work. Um, I've got this other packet of um, of the uh, plain chrome though, and just to be thorough, I'm going to try it. I don't think the results are going to be any different, but this would not be a complete test if I skip it. So I'm going to open this package and get a little sample off of that, and we'll see what happens there. Okay, so I got that uh, piece off, and again, taking a look at it before I stick it down, you can see you can see the wrinkles. All right, but let's go ahead and burnish it on there and see what we get. Okay. And I uh, also, while I'm burnishing, I'll say this, I went back and reviewed the instructions just to make sure that I wasn't overlooking anything. And of course it says, you know, follow these instructions to the letter. Uh, the problem is that in his instructions, he doesn't really talk that much about the actual burnishing technique uh, other than to just make sure you don't get any wrinkles going. He just basically says, you know, take it off, put it on. There's not a whole lot more there than that. Uh, one technique, he says, is polish it with a soft t-shirt, and I didn't do that, and that's not going to take that texture out. Um, and that, there you go, is even much, much worse right out of a brand new package that I literally just sliced open and is, I mean, this package could, you know, is obviously at least six months old, um, but my old foil does the exact same thing. So I really am starting to, to not feel like that the age of this stuff is really the issue. I mean, you can see that's pretty pretty nubbly right there in the package. I mean, that's got, you know, that's got that basketball texture already started there. So I, I'm really starting to be pretty skeptical that the age of the foil is, is really the, uh, is, or the, or the age of the adhesive more specifically is, is really what's, uh, what's going on. Uh, but anyway, that's that part of the test. There's no denying that, uh, um, it's not, you know, that, that, that it's, it's not uh, caused by molded in texture because, again, there is definitely not any of that here. It's not the difference between the bare metal foil and the self-made stuff because actually, in this little test, the stuff I made, it looks way better. Way better. Still not good enough, but definitely better. The only thing that concerns me with it is what happened here with these glue bubbles, because obviously, you know, that's not something you want to want to have, you know, six months after you've spent all that time putting foil on your model to walk in and find that it's got all these bubbles in it. I mean, some people might say, oh, you get a stress skin effect. Yeah, no, I want effects like that when I purposefully cause them to happen not for some other reason. And you can kind of see when I rub my finger on the back side of that, that is definitely the adhesive coming loose. You can see the with my finger where I kind of 
mash on it on the back side, you can see my, my fingernail moving underneath that. That's definitely, that foil has come loose. So that's not gonna be acceptable either. Nonetheless, I'm still gonna persevere with the other tests. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is uh, uh, I'm gonna use this stuff using both what we will call the Vigiani method and the Wright method. Maybe one of those actually will be the R-I-G-H-T method. Okay, it's next morning and I did a little bit of work last night where I applied this piece using the Vigiani method. But before we get into that and talk about uh, what's happening there, let's take a look at exactly what that method entails. I've got the uh, one of the videos that he sent me queued up right here so you guys can see the same thing that I saw if I can get the uh, reflection off of it. So th th we won't look at the whole thing because it's about 10 minutes long, but the important parts are right here. So all he's doing is you can see he just squirted the glue right on the surface of the model, straight out of the bottle. Then he's using a little bit of water on a brush and uh, smearing it around until it's uh, evenly spread out. Pretty straightforward, but you can see how this is very different from the traditional method. Okay, so now once he's got the glue spread out, he's going to get to the burnishing part. I guess that means make sure it's lined up the way it needs to be. <laughs> anyway, so now what he's using here is, he explained to me, it's actually a little sliver of plywood. And I think that's pretty important. But the rest, the next six or seven minutes is him just doing more of this. So we'll stop that and actually get into doing it here. So uh, first things first. I'm going to put a little bit of water in this little dish, also all over the workbench. Got the glue here. Get that little bit shaken up. Oh, I'm going to, I guess I should get a piece of foil cut here. Okay, so I got just one of these cheap things. All right. So, what I'm going to do is, is basically just focus on uh, this panel and then uh, and then these two right here Okay, that should be more than enough Gonna get a little bit of water on this brush. I Did when I did this one over here last night. I used a, a q-tip to uh, spread the the water and glue around and I felt like it got too thin too watery and I, I really had a hard time uh, keeping the uh, the thing stuck to the the surface like it was moving around on me while I was burnishing it and that's a problem that I ran into with the uh, when I did it with the other glue as well. Um, and, and I don't know what to do about that. Maybe I'm burnishing too hard, I don't know. But anyway, you can see that surface tension is keeping that, you know, is, is, at, is at play here. The, the glue is not staying uh, spread evenly. I gotta get a paper towel here. Uh, and, and, and I thought that maybe that was a problem, uh, but I guess when you do the burnishing, that doesn't really matter because you're kind of squeegeeing it around under there and it, you know, should, should end up not being an issue. Um, I can't believe that it's any less of an issue uh, for him than it is for me. I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to put this on with the shiny side down. I can't remember if he 
is doing it that way or not, but I put this one over here, shiny side up, and uh, so I'm gonna do this one opposite. Uh, I don't think it really makes much difference given that um, I'm gonna end up sanding and polishing later on so I don't think it, it really should matter which side is, is, is pointed up. Now I don't know what the difference is why the surface tension doesn't seem to be working as much in that area now that I rebrushed it. I don't know but I tried to use a little less water this time. So let's just see what happens when we get stuck in literally. So I'm just doing what I think he's doing, kind of squeegeeing that down with my fingers. Okay, now for the piece of wood. So I, I think that the, that the wood is important. At first I thought, well, why isn't he using balsa wood? And he actually told me that balsa wood was too soft, and I, but I had to try it. And I think that that, that that is true. I think the balsa wood just does not do as good a job at squeegeeing as a harder piece of wood. I don't have a little sliver of plywood, but I do have this piece of basswood, um, and that's that's every bit as hard as as plywood. So I'm going to just put a little bit of water on it, like he's doing, which he says is just for the purpose of of lubricating the surface, so that the 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 uh, foil doesn't get uh, torn while you're doing this part. So, and, and I also don't know how hard he's, he's, uh, he's rubbing. I mean, it kind of seems like he's not rubbing very hard at all, and he's going around in circles, so I guess I better also go around in circles, even though my instinct is to kind of squeegee in, in straight lines away from the middle of my uh, of, of my piece of foil here. So I'm gonna just get that burnished down as, as best as possible. Okay, so again, I'm not sure exactly how much burnishing is, is necessary because I can't see in, in the video well enough to know, you know, what he's what he's getting done there. I assume that he's working until he's number one confident that the that the foil is completely attached. Now, see, I went over the edge there, and I and I and I got a little bit of it peeling up, which obviously I don't want. That's one thing I've learned, is that you really need to work with a piece that's significantly larger than the panel you're trying to cover. Um, because you start getting those edges exposed. And also, you don't want the piece to be flexing while you're doing this. Because you can already see, like right here, it's trying to peel up. If the, if the thing is bending underneath it, it's not going to stay put. So, again, I'm going to just keep keep working this. I'm starting to be able to see those panel lines showing up under there. And uh, it, you know, seems like the material is, is pretty well stuck down everywhere I want it to be. So I'm just going to go with that. Gonna wipe that down a little bit. Not going to worry about getting all the glue off of there now. Okay, the next thing that he's doing is he's taking a a toothpick and just working the uh, the panel lines so that's my next my next step 
Okay, so I've got those panel lines pretty well burnished in there. Um, now the next thing he does, and he gets to it pretty quickly, is he is going ahead and cutting around the uh, edge of the panel. Um, and, and I'm not going to do that yet for two reasons. One is that I'm not 100% confident that this thing is, is really stuck. Um, I've, you know, I'm getting, uh, so I can see uh, in, a, in a couple of places where it's, it's moving a little bit. Like I've got, you know, like a bubble kind of under the, under the foil. Um, and so I want to let it set up to where I can feel confident that it is truly glued down there. I mean, there's no hurry. But the other reason that I want to leave it on there for a while, see, there's, there's a, there's, it's loose right there. Um, so, but the other reason that I want to leave it on there for a while is because in my previous tests, I also figured out that when it comes to doing the sanding <coughs> and polishing part, that you really need some some uh, some some overlap, if that makes sense. Um, because if you're sanding and you're working up against an exposed edge like that, that there's a tendency for for it to tear or to come loose. And obviously, I don't want that. So uh, I think that the best practice is to let it set up first, then do whatever sanding is required, and then come back and trim. Now, I'm starting to see that little oval access hatch right there. That's good, because I didn't see that before. So I gotta get my toothpick in there. Toothpick is getting soft because it's a little too a little too wet on the end. Anyway, so I'm going to finish up this part and then uh, come back and talk about the piece that I did last night. Okay, so I'm just doing a little last bit of burnishing. It kind of seems like that with the glue under there that there's a point where it goes from being wet to sticky and the idea I think is to just keep working the surface until you can see that that that's happened and I think that's where the harder piece of wood comes in because it just does a better job of getting everything out from under the foil and getting you to that point where uh, it's uh, truly you know starting to stick all right, so that's at least that's at least a start right there. I think that's good enough. You can always come back and do more of that kind of burnishing later on. Now let's talk about this piece that I did last night. So, a couple of things you can see. Um, it, it looks like it's pretty well stuck, and we're going to test that here momentarily, but let's look for the texture. Okay, the texture is certainly there but it's not just really like it doesn't seem to be as bad um, part of the reason I think is because of the uh, the brushed grain finish of the of the foil though um, I mean it's you know it's it's there but maybe maybe better than I mean, it certainly looks better than the bare metal foil, but there you go. When the reflection is just right, you can see you can see the orange peel, the basketball texture, whatever you want to call it, kind of in the edges of the of the reflection. So we'll see what happens when when that gets when that gets sanded. The other thing is. 
you can see some ghost sort of panel lines. And that was happening because this thing was just trying to scoot around on me while I was burnishing it. And the panel lines that I sort of had going then became misaligned. And that obviously is not a good thing. So, you know, that's, that's, that's a potential issue that, uh, that has to be dealt with. Now, what I'm curious about is how well this is stuck on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and peel it off. Yeah, not very stuck. Not very stuck at all, and that's concerning to me. Um, it, just in terms of relative stuckness, uh, this is less stuck than bare metal foil, which is less stuck than my DIY foil. So this is a concern. I, do, I don't think, seeing how easily that came off of there, that I would feel very confident. But one thing you can tell is that all of that, you know, burnishing work leaves a pretty, a pretty uniform film of, of glue. Again, it's hard to see with it being, being on gray and, uh, you know, not having the right, not having the light at the right angle. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside uh, and make sure that's, dry enough and then I'm going to actually sand and polish that piece and that will be a good test of how well it holds up uh, you know as far as how well stuck it is okay so here we go while the other one is drying I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get to the Jen Wright method now if you want to check out what she does her channel is Genesis Designs and Modeling and that's spelled with a J. Uh, specifically, you can see right here, Genesis Design. And this, she's got a couple of videos. One of them is this aluminum foil as a natural metal finish for modeling. And then uh, she's also got one where she uh, specifically then uh, comes back and looks at it again. Both of them are good videos. Um, I would encourage you to go over to her channel, check out her work. She's uh, a good model maker even if you're not interested in the foil thing. Now, um, I'm not gonna try and cue up her video to the right spot, but what she does is, is what I would <clears throat> sort of call a hybrid method, a hybrid of the, just a variation of the traditional method. Um, because she puts the glue on the foil, um, but the, the first thing she does, which is what I'm doing here is, she just cleans it off with a little bit of uh, IPA just to make sure that there's no gunk on it. And she does that with a cotton bud just like I'm doing here. So, and I'm gonna go shiny side down. Uh, she also allows us how it doesn't really matter which one you're gonna do <coughs> first. Uh, which one, which side you <clears throat> you put down because if you're going to sand it later, and she does, uh, it doesn't matter. I've already cleaned off the workpiece, so um, now she is using the micro scale foil, um, and uh, I, I don't know how it really compares in thickness. I say my, I said micro scale foil. I meant micro scale foil adhesive. Um, I don't really know how it compares in thickness, but she's using it straight out of the uh, bottle, from what I can tell, and she is applying it with a Q-tip. Uh, it appears to be the same Q-tip that she's using to clean the part, but just in case, I'm going to take a new Q-tip, and she says she's getting two to three applications of glue out of each q-tip before it uh, <clears throat> starts to, to uh, just get you know the, the q-tip just starts to get too gunked up so anyway she's just applying the glue just like this and it's kind of hard to tell from the video how much surface tension e effect she's got going on, but 
I already have a lot and that's that concerns me because wherever the surface tension is is making the glue bead up there's not going to be glue so I'm not sure what the answer to that is I may have to give this a couple of tries at getting the glue properly applied uh, I, that's just that I mean I, that obviously is just not going to work um, so let's try this I feel like there's got to be an even layer of glue she also talks about spraying it on which I've done but doing that on a piece by piece basis is not practical you have to do a whole sheet and that's the problem with doing her method uh, and, and spraying it on a whole sheet is because what's different about the way she does it is she's putting the glue on and then just letting it dry for just like a few seconds uh, like 30 seconds maybe until the milkiness goes away uh, and it looks clear and then she's immediately sticking it sticking it to the workpiece so again I just I don't know if this is gonna if this is gonna gonna do because it just that surface tension is just so powerful I may have to send her a message and ask her what she's doing about this uh, surface tension issue because you know it could be the different properties of the glue this may be another case where I have to go buy another thing of glue because uh, you know they do they have different properties even though they all say polyvinyl at polyvinyl acrylic Or maybe it's polyvinyl acetate. I can never remember. But at any rate, surface tension. Problem. The other thing is, is you can't let it bead up like this and then dry because that's going to form a big lump of glue underneath the foil. And we've already seen that any amount of... of uh, of a bump or a lump, I mean a dust speck, a hair, whatever, is going to show up underneath that. Uh, so I'm just not, I just don't think this is going to work with this, with this piece of foil. I'm going to try the other side of the foil. Let's just see, I'm not going to use this piece of foil, but let's just see if the glue behaves better on the dull side of the foil. Maybe the, uh, maybe the surface tension won't be in effect as much on, on this side. And it's kind of not, but still not really, still not really working. Uh, so I don't know less less of an issue but still still not acceptable so I, I, I'm gonna have to stop here and rethink this uh, because I, I feel like I'm just not gonna get anywhere uh, using this method okay I'm gonna try this again but I've gone back to this Mona Lisa glue uh, that I used for my DIY foil uh, that I sprayed on uh, this stuff seems to maybe be stickier Maybe that's a conclusion I can come to. But also, just right in the bottle, it was thin enough that I sprayed it straight out of the bottle. That, in fact, ended up being the better, the better result than when I initially reduced it, uh, which was kind of surprising. But that being the case, I'm going to just take my Q-tip, and this is the Q-tip that I just used to uh, clean this off with IPA. Just going to get some of that and see what happens here it's it's uh 
does not seem to be beating up as much. I wonder if the fact that there was IPA in this Q-tip made any difference. I sort of contaminated the experimental process there, didn't I? But nonetheless, that's, that's better. That's a lot more like what I see happening in Jen's videos. So that then, okay, we'll just let that sit here for a second and uh, start to turn clear because that's what she's that's what she's doing is just waiting just long enough for the milkiness to start to disappear okay so it's been uh, maybe five minutes and and this stuff has finally gone clear and I did sort of smooth out the uh, the puddles where it was pooling because I know those are gonna be too thick but I, I went back and looked at the instructions and this stuff says apply a thin even coat with a brush do not, in capital letters, leave puddles. Apply leaf when adhesive dries. Color will change from milky to clear. Maybe 30 minutes. So, you know, maybe this stuff just does not uh, dry as fast as the micro scale stuff. Uh, nonetheless, I think we're ready to go. You can see that it is clear. And uh, so I'm just going to stick it on here. And uh, now Jen is burnishing hers down with the with the side of a of a, a cocktail stick. Um, I don't think it really makes much difference. I'm gonna just stick to this thing here. Um, I, I, and I say it doesn't make much difference after saying that the difference between balsa wood and this bass wood did make a difference. Uh, I'm pretty sure the cocktail sticks are also made out of something like basswood so that's why I'm saying here that I don't think it does matter and she says specifically that she's putting quite a bit of pressure on so I'm gonna also not be shy about that You can see I've got some bubbles under there, though, and that's that's a problem. There's air trapped under there, and that cannot be allowed to to remain. I don't know what I'm going to do there, but you can also really see, you know, there's strings from the Q-tip. There's uh, you know, some of that's bubbling, some of it's unevenness from the application. Um, I mean, it's a mess. I feel like she did a much better job. And I messaged her just now, and she has just responded. So, let's see what she says. Okay, so I asked her if she was getting the... Uh, same kind of surface tension issues. And here's what she says. Yes, I cleaned the foil with alcohol to help avoid that. And also smoothed it over repeatedly until I had thickened enough with drying that it stayed put. Sounds ridiculous, I know, but it works. So, uh, there we go. Awesome, period. Thank you for the quick response, period. I just read it live on camera, period, LOL. Okay, so uh, anyway, um, I think, you know, clearly we're seeing that there are common issues. Now, um, what I don't, you know, what I don't like are these, are these bubbles. There's just, you know, that, that's just not going to be, that's just not going to be viable. And so, I guess the only thing to do really is let the air out of those. and hope that they'll burnish out. I don't really know any other, any, anything else to do. Some of those sort of lumpy looking areas are clearly 
sort of brush stroke effects. So that looks like that letting the air out there took care of the of the bubbles and now it's just a question of getting it all burnished down there. Now, she talks about texture. Um, she talks about texture and, and sanding it out um, and how some texture can kind of work in your favor because of the stressed skin effect. And, and she's not wrong about that, sort of. I mean, I, I, I mostly agree. Um, the thing that you see with stressed skin is you see large, low-frequency ripples. And maybe some of those brush strokes could, could serve for that. I don't know. But the orange peel texture definitely does not serve as uh, any sort of a, of a facsimile for uh, stressed skin. Um, so still going to have to work that out. Now she gets to the sanding and the uh, uh, and the trimming almost immediately, from what I can tell. Um, I, for the same reasons that I mentioned before, am not going to trim this yet. Okay, so of course I couldn't resist continuing to mess with this. And so I went ahead and yanked that piece of foil off, and I did. I, 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 I must say yanked because it was super stuck on there. Couldn't get it off in one piece. So that's encouraging. This Mona Lisa Speedball stuff is definitely stickier. Then, um, and, and Jen and I have been messaging here in the meantime, talking about the alcohol. I, I cleaned this piece of foil with a really wet Q-tip with a lot of alcohol on it. And before the alcohol even dried, I grabbed this brush and, and smoothed this on here. And she said that she was continuing to kind of brush at it until she didn't have any puddles. So that's good. Uh, so I can do that. But this application with this brush was much, much better than it was with the Q-tip. So that's also encouraging. So I'm going to go ahead and burnish this on there and we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, so quick note here. I've got this burnished down and it's all good. Uh, but, okay, you can definitely see uh, not only the texture, but the brush strokes. I mean, even as good as the application was with that nice flat brush that I used right there, you can definitely see the brush strokes, which takes me all the way back to the reason that I sprayed this stuff to begin with. But again, unless you're going to keep it in your airbrush right next to you and spray each piece as you go, that's just not going to work for this method where you're trying to put it on there really quickly after it sets up. Um, so, I mean, because you really don't want this uh, adhesive sitting around in your airbrush for any length of time. And given the difficulty I had in sanding out the basketball texture, I don't know that that's going to be at all usable, but we're gonna find out. I'm gonna sand it later today. The other thing that I just did is I ordered some uh, Reynolds Wrap Heavy Duty so that I have the exact same stuff that Jen is using. This is not the Heavy Duty, and I, it may only be like a 20% difference. I don't know, we'll measure it and find out, but it might be significant enough, so we'll see. Okay, so it's a couple days later, and uh, yeah, I did some things. Um, I have not done any more with this. Um, I honestly uh, wanted to see if it would stick any better than it did over here. I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, let's just see. Yeah, it's just really not stuck very well. And uh, that, you know, that, that would have me worried um, if... Uh, I were depending on that to stay in place for the lifetime of the model. So 
I think I'm gonna conclude that this glue and that method is just not gonna work. And that went in the trash can. Now, this other piece that I put on using the gin right method, yeah, way, way stickier. Um, when I went to pull off the excess that was around it, yeah, it was hard to get it off. I couldn't get it all off in one piece. So if, if you're out there, you know, and you're looking at doing the foil and you want to use the gin right method or the traditional method, I really think this glue is, I mean, it's great. Um, it, you know, it, it's, just, it's just undeniable. I don't know how it compares to the stickiness of the uh, micro scale foil adhesive, uh, but this is good stuff. Now, what happened here? Why does this look so ragged? Well, because um, I did do some polish, some sanding and polishing, and honestly, it looked about the same as all my other results, uh, except a little worse because of uh, the linear brush strokes that were there. So then I was just like, all right, well, I got nothing to lose. What, you know, let me just see how far down I can, I can take this. So I hit it with one of these little Goodman sanding blocks. <laughs> and yeah, obviously, yeah, I might've flattened out some texture, but not only did I do, not only did I introduce some scratches, but yeah, it tore right through it. But I went ahead and sanded it down and did some polishing. And yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty reflective. Uh, in the areas that it's intact, but it still is full of a shit ton of scratches and orange peel and yeah. So, uh, and the polish I used, I, I used the mothers. It's good. Did it with my rotary thing like I've been doing and that's good. Uh, but I just cannot get here. Okay. This is a chunk of... 6061 T6, which is your pretty, you know, standard everyday machine shop aluminum. And it's pretty hard, um, not nearly as hard as like a 7075 or a 2024. Uh, but, you know, you can see that even with, you know, a, a basic uh, machine finish, that it is smooth, you know, and it's nice and reflective. That's what I want to get to at a minimum. I could polish this to a mirror polish relatively easily uh, if I wanted to. And I just, I don't know why I can't get there with this. Aluminum foil is AL1235, which is an alloy that is 99.35% pure aluminum minimum. And it's also annealed. And so it's a lot softer than that. And it, the, the truth is that the softer something is, the more difficult it is to polish. Uh, you know, the same thing happens with a 2K urethane clear gloss uh, clear coat. If it's not fully hardened, like it won't pass the thumbnail test, it's almost impossible to get a truly, uh, you know, complete scratch-free polish on it. And, and, you know, metals are the same way. So, you know, this makes me wonder if I just haven't found the right tools or the, you know, the right... Uh, 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 polishing compounds, because obviously you can polish soft materials. Jewelers polish gold and silver all the time. So there may be something here that I'm missing, but the next thing I'm gonna do is I've got some thicker foil coming in, should be here uh, in the next couple days, and I'm hoping that that may at least help. Uh, if it doesn't, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do after that. Okay, so there you go. Like I said, if you suffered through that, yeah, mad respect. But as you can see, I was not wrong. There was no joy there, uh, but there will be, I promise. And if you're still watching, uh, you know, I definitely appreciate it. Much love. You need it. <laughs>